Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another episode of Reading the Constitution. And today's Friday, the 29th of March, 2019. And then we're on Article 1, and I think we're going to cover Section 4 through 6 today. Let's just uh, review where we're at here. So uh, here's all the sections of the Constitution. You notice we've got almost everything covered in the original Constitution, um, except for Article 1. Although we did do uh, the overview of Article 1, and we did look at Section 1 of Article 1. And then we also got, uh, we're not doing the uh, any of the amendments right now. We're going to do the original Constitution first. And uh, so I remember I looked at the, uh, the uh, sections of the uh, um, Article 1, which is about the legislative branch. And again, we've uh, looked at Section 1. And then Section 2. Is about the House of Representatives, and Section 3 is about the Senate. And we're going to skip those for now. I'm going to jump down to Section 4 and uh, and uh, do that today. Hopefully we've got to 5 and 6 also. So Section 4 is called Elections and Meetings. Let's just uh, give a quick look here and see what Section 4 looks like here. And so there is the, uh, the Constitution I printed out. That's the website there. And you can see right down at the bottom there, the section there is, uh, section four has got two clauses here. And remember, this constitution, this uh, copy here, or this uh, file where they printed it, they, they number the clauses. The original constitution doesn't do that, but it's actually pretty convenient to be able to refer to them that way. So that's what we're going to do here. So uh, so here we go with uh, section four. And uh, so there it is. You see it's got two clauses. I've called them 4.1 and 4.2, and again, those numbers aren't in the Constitution. So I'm just going to read them here. And uh, it says, The times, places, and manner of holding elections for senators and representatives shall be prescribed in each state by the legislature thereof. But the Congress may at any time by law make or alter such regulations except as the place of choosing senators. So this basically is just kind of a year. You know, think about... Uh, when they do the elections, and, and you can see it's actually determined by um, the legislatures of each state. That's what gets to determine uh, when, the, uh, when the elections are done. And uh, the second part, the second, uh, second clause, which I'm calling 4.2 here, it says, uh, has to do with when they shall meet. It says, Congress shall assemble at least once in every year, and such meetings shall be on the first Monday in December, unless they shall by law appoint a different day. And uh, so that just says when they're going to meet once a year, and it's going to be the first Monday in December. Now, you notice I have it in brackets there with the little, uh, you know, the uh, asterisks, because this was actually modified by Amendment 20, Section 2. But we're not going to look at that now. Uh, we're, we're just assuming it was back in 1897. This is what it looked like. Okay, let's jump back here. So that's uh, Section uh, 4 is all done. So I could actually... Uh, um, check that off if I wanted to. Let's look at section five, is rules and procedures. And remember, that has, uh, I go over here to the second page in this particular copy of the Constitution. Looks like there's one, two, three, four clauses there. So that's what, uh, that's what they uh, labeled them. So let's go to section five here and look at the first clause. And I'll just read that here. And it says, each house shall be the judge of the elections, returns, and qualifications of its own members, and the majority of each shall constitute a quorum to do business. So what that's saying is that, uh, you know, each of the houses, the Senate or the House of Representatives, basically gets to judge uh, the election, and uh, they get to determine if it's uh, legitimate or not, and, uh, and all that kind of thing. And it also it just says, it says that a majority is constitute a quorum to do business. So that says that basically, you have to have uh, more than uh, half plus one member in order. That's a simple majority, we call that, in order to do, has to be present to do business. And everybody doesn't have to vote, but they all have to be, uh, you have to have at least uh, half plus one as uh, present. Continuing on, it says, but a smaller number may, be, may adjourn from day to day and may be authorized to compel the attendance of absent members in such manner and under such penalties as each house may provide. So well, there you go, that's... Uh, I think you can understand what that says. It says that, uh, you know, uh, well, that's what it says. So let's get the se second uh, um, clause here, 5.2. It 
This says each house may determine the rules of its proceedings, punish its members for disorderly behavior, and with the concurrence of two thirds, expel a member. So there you go. It says that uh, they're basically in charge of their own house, and they could do stuff like, uh, you know, expel a member if they want to, if he's uh, being disorderly, and uh, provide two thirds of the people want him uh, kicked out. Okay, that's the first two clauses, but there's two more clauses here. So let's look at the next two. So clause number 5.3, I'm calling it, is as follows. Each house shall keep a journal of its proceedings and from time to time publish the same, accepting such parts as may in their judgment require secrecy. Okay, so that's, uh, I think they might call that the congressional record. Uh, I'd have to look into that, but uh, I believe you can get a copy of that. And so everybody could, could read the uh, journal of what happens in the uh, House or in the Senate. And, thing, and also, it's made public except for some parts they may do in secret if they desire. And uh, continuing on, it says, and the yeas and nays of the members of each house on any question shall at the desire of one fifth of those present be entered on the journal. So there you go, it says that if uh, only one fifth of the people want the uh, vote uh, recorded as to who voted which way, uh, it'll be entered onto the journal. And this is a good thing, because you know, if you have a re representative uh, for your state, most of the citizens would like to know how the guy is voting on, a, on various uh, bills and issues and things to make sure he's doing what they want him to do. Otherwise, if not, they can recall him. And uh, you're just the next election, they can vote him out of office. Okay, the last clause here is 5.4. It says, neither house during the accession of Congress shall without the consent of the other adjourn for more than three days nor to any, any other place than that in which the two houses shall be sitting. So it just says that uh, um, you know, they can't uh, adjourn for more than three days. And uh, they have to you know, meet at the same time. Okay, so that's, uh, that basically covers Article uh, 5. And like I said, that pretty much covers uh, just rules and procedures that they've laid out there. And finally, I'm going to do Section 6 here, which has to do with compensation, privileges, and restrictions. And there's only two clauses. It looks like we're going to finish this pretty easy today. So here is, uh, is uh, number six. And it's kind of long. It's uh, the first clause is clause uh, 6.1 is what we're calling it. In fact, I should show you over here in the original Constitution. You see down there, it's right in the middle, uh, Article 6. So that's it there. It says, the senators and representatives shall receive a compensation for their services to be ascertained by law and paid out of the Treasury of the United States. So uh, there's a really simple thing. It just says they all need to get paid, and they're paid by the Treasury of the U.S. Uh, so they're not paid by states. They're not paid by any private parties or anything. They're paid by the Treasury. And uh, they shall, in all cases, except treason, felony, and breach of the peace, be privileged from arrest during their attendance to the session of their respective houses, and in going to and returning from the same. And for any speech or debate in either house, they shall not be questioned in any other place. So that part is now is the privileges of being a senator. Basically, you can't get arrested for, you know, where the police can't uh, hold you or detain you or anything like that. Um, the legislators are protected from arrest. If there's a civil lawsuit or something like that, they can't be arrested. However, if they do, uh, if they do breach the peace, they can be arrested for a criminal matter. So, uh, and basically the idea is that they, uh, they grant immunity from criminal prosecution for the things they say and worked in as legislators. That's what the last part says. So they can say whatever they want, that they can't be held liable and then prosecuted either civilly or criminally. Okay, we're down to the very last clause here at section uh, six here. This is clause 6.2, and it says, uh, this is a restriction. It says, no senator or representative shall during the time for which he was elected be appointed to any civil office under the authority of the United States which shall have been created or the emoluments whereof shall have been increased during such time. And no person holding any office under the United States shall be a member of either house during his, his continuance in office. And uh, so it's just a restriction on who can be a senator or a congressman. And uh, what, you know, what's the reason for this? Why can't a senator or a representative uh, be uh, hold another office? Well, this is... Uh, to ensure the separation of the powers. Like you don't want someone who like works for the president. Maybe he's like the uh, treasury secretary, uh, also running for uh, Congress. And he's also his feet in both uh, camps, so to speak. So he's restricted from doing that. So that's basically uh, 
um, six, uh, section 6.2. And I'll just, there's one question, one word here. It's called the emoluments. And I think I can highlight it there. See the word emoluments? And uh, so what exactly is emoluments? It's not, it's not the kind of word that you use every day. I don't think I've ever used that word in, in, in spoken uh, English. I don't think I've ever actually even written it down except uh, when we're getting here to talk about the Constitution. So I looked it up in the dictionary online, of course, and here's some definitions of emoluments. And the, the word emolument, it's, a, it's plural, so it's really emolument. I should just make this uh, singular. Emolument is the common definition is salary, wages, and benefits paid for employment or an office held. So that's kind of the common, it just means something of value you get uh, for a job or employment or for an office. But there is apparently a legal definition, and I'll just read that. It's from a legal dictionary. It says, uh, uh, emolument is the profit arising from office, employment, or labor, that which is received as a compensation for services or which is annexed to the possession of office as salary, fees, and perquisites. Any perquisite, advantage, profit, or gain arising from the possession of an office. So you can see it's really anything you get that uh, value. Um, could be uh, money, could be a gift, could be uh, you know, free lunch, it could be uh, you know, country club membership, uh, really anything. Uh, would be considered an emolument. So if you go back to this thing here, it says that uh, you know you can't uh, receive an emolument here. Uh, they can't increase the emolument during the time you're in office. So anyway, that's basically uh, we covered section four, five, and six here, which is pretty good. So uh, again, we got section one covered. Uh, two and three, we're going to save for later. Four, five, and six is uh, now covered. And I think we're now getting to the real heart of the Constitution here. Uh, the next episode, we're going to do uh, number section 7 of Article 1, which has to do with bills and laws. Okay, 